The formulation of a national land use policy is in its final stages. The Ministry of Health issues statements on the Ebola virus, and All Saints University hosts its 22nd White Coat Ceremony. Thank you for joining us for another edition of National Focus. I'm Kredisha St. Louis. And I'm Mervyn Matthews. Stay for us with details of the headline stories and others right after the break. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Thanks for staying with us. The Central Statistics Office, as part of its mandate to provide users with timely, accurate, and reliable data, has undertaken the task of archiving all relevant data as it relates to Dominica. In an exclusive interview with the GIS News, Chief Statistician Prima Caret elaborated on the project. Central Statistics Office has embarked on a major project, uh, the archiving of data. Uh, basically, it's getting all the reports of previous years together. Um, you look at whether they are preserved, whether there are any errors, whether there are any inconsistencies within the reports. Um, we harness those data and we scan them. Uh, after scanning, we put them in the database where they are preserved. We have information on a cross-section of data, economic and social. We have information way back from 1871. According to Carrots, the reason behind the archiving project is to preserve the country's data. The purpose or objective of the archiving is to preserve the country's data. You want to know what happened, where you came from, um, your production levels over 30 years, 40 years, even 50 years, what was it then and how you can compare it now. It will um, present your development processes and what you have achieved. The chief statistician commented on the importance of collecting data. She explained that it can show the vital development and decline patterns of a country. It is um, essential that you have historical data. Um, maybe sometimes, for example, maybe you think you were doing better in the past than in the present. You can examine the causes why you have maybe lost production or productivity in certain sectors. You may want to learn from the processes that um, helped you achieve certain production levels. Also, you're preserving that data for research. You know, um, we have, right now we have um, educational, the educational pursuits you have um, research that you want to conduct in certain areas and you want to look at what historical data do you have to compare with your recent data. So, and again, we have demand for historical data from researchers, students, planners. Another aspect of the archiving is to preserve your history. Like I said, your development over the years. Along with making headway for more efficient information retrieval, the archiving project will also ensure the preservation of these essential documents. Sometimes um, we get demands for data that we have already produced, but we cannot lay our hands on a copy of the report because there was no formal archiving of the data. 
we, uh, you produce a report and after 10 years it gets lost somewhere and you go on a wild goose chase and you sometimes never retrieve the report. But if you have archiving, you know exactly where to go to. As a matter of fact, we are going to dedicate a special server for the arch archiving. So it will be housed in one database. In other news, the development of a national land use policy is in its final stages. The formulation of the first ever national land use policy began in January. The physical planning division drafted the policy on how best to use the country's lands. Acting Chief Physical Planner Kelvin Roll said that Cabinet is reviewing the document and he expects that it will be approved soon. The policy document covers, let's say, protection of water supplies, that everywhere should have portable water, um, management of watersheds, you know, sanitation, that we should have good sanitation, um, protection of forests, forests or forest um, reserves, you know, agriculture that um, or the um, good lands, prime lands, lands suitable for ag agriculture should be protected and should be utilized for agriculture. The document gives guidance to an orderly division of lands for housing, agriculture and protecting lands for tourism. There are some areas of Dominica we, want, we will not want to sub be um, subdivided into very small lots. We want them to remain in large portions um, because of the sensitiv sensitivity of those areas. As we know, like in Pocasi area, we we um, Bunielo, the minimum lot size is be an acre and a half in Pocasi. We do not want small lots in Pocasi because of the water quality. We want to maintain a, a particular water quality. We want to maintain a particular character of landscape. And so we will only allow development to take place on lands. The minimum lot size is an acre and a half. So all these things will be put, all these ideas, all these will be put into the policy and also will be put into the National Land Use Plan. Measures are being taken to strengthen Dominica's health surveillance system. That's according to Dr. Charlotte Jeremy Coffey, the officer in charge of the Office of the Chief Medical Officer. Dr. Coffey issued a statement last week amidst the global concerns regarding the most significant outbreak of the Ebola virus, which has caused over 900 deaths. Ebola virus disease, or EVD, formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, is a severe, often fatal illness. Up to nine out of every 10 people with the infection die. There are no licensed specific treatments or vaccine available for use in people or animals. The time between acquiring an infection and showing symptoms and signs varies from two to 21 days. Dr. Coffey further explained how the virus is spread and its symptoms. The virus is highly infectious and is spread by person-to-person -person transmission through direct contact with bodily fluids or secretions of infected persons, including blood, sweat, urine, or feces. The most common symptoms experienced by persons infected with the virus are the sudden onset of fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache, and sore throat. This is followed by vomiting, diarrhea, rash, impaired kidney or liver function, and at advanced stage, both internal and external bleeding. While there is currently no suspected cases of Ebola in the region at this time, the health official says that the Ministry of Health is already putting measures in place to strengthen its health system to be able to manage the illness if it is detected in the region and specifically Dominica. In the light of the current epidemiological and social context, preparedness efforts to face the introduction of possible Ebola cases in our country is warranted. The Honorable Minister for Health is keeping Cabinet abreast of all developments. Immediate measures are being taken to strengthen the surveillance system already in place under the International Health Regulations or IHR. This includes providing relevant information to travelers, increasing medical staff at ports of entry, mobilizing appropriate protective gear, making arrangements for quarantine of persons who are suspect. In addition, discussions and consultations are taking place between Ministry of Health officials and relevant stakeholders in our community, 
as well as with international partners, including the World Health Organization, WHO, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. Local health personnel are being updated on how to recognize and manage Ebola and all relevant stakeholders are being informed so that necessary plans are in place. 19 students of the All Saints University officially received their white coats on Saturday. The official robing of the students marked the transition from the study of preclinical to clinical health sciences. Honorable Dr. Kenneth Dow represented the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt at the ceremony on Saturday. He addressed the students on a personal level. Of course, yours is a noble profession. And this um, ceremony this afternoon signifies, as the dean so eloquently said, passing from one stage of a career into another, not into the final stage, because as he said, this is a profession where you have to be continually learning. Of course, as a medical doctor, after probably I said, I remember a few years ago addressing another ceremony right here, we I said that probably after politics, a doctor is probably the most demanding profession in terms of hours, ethics, and of course, dedication. And I can tell you, because I'm a medical doctor myself, my doctor title is not of a um, PhD, but of a medical doctor. So I have an experience, the, well, both worlds can tell you that it is indeed demanding. And, it's, and not so much as the knowledge, of course, knowledge and intelligence will play a significant role in your success as a doctor. But more so, as I said, your dedication and your work ethics, and most importantly, your love for human beings. Because at the end of the day, this is what it entails. You ensuring that your client, your patient, get better. Of course, there will be times when, even after your most, your most dedicated efforts, that it might, the results might not be what you wanted it to be, but at the end of the day, you will be rest assured that you have given it your all and tried your best, best sorry, applied your knowledge and hope for the best results. Dominica's Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter Sejan, also addressed the students. He reminded them of the importance of their roles on a global level. As you transition from what I would consider a knowledge-based environment within the four walls of all saints. And you move to that phase in your medical career where you're now going to be in direct contact with individuals who will place their very life into your hand. You need to recognize that with every passing day, the challenges become even more demanding. Given the new and emerging challenges in the world of medicine, and here we have our own challenges locally and regionally, and of course internationally, as we listen to the news media, you recognize that for us as leaders, these are demanding times. But for you as medical professionals, you must give us the answers to the problems that humanity faces. Dean of Academic Affairs at the All Saints University, Dr. John Clerk, told the students that they are moving closer to joining a very distinguished profession. You will slowly become medical members of medical profession, the profession which is looked on not only a symbol of great knowledge, but also as one based on higher ethical principles and compassion. This ceremony today serves two purposes. First, it is a testimony of your successful completion of the initial part of your medical studies, basic medical knowledge and skills. Second, it signifies beginning of the next level of your medical education, clinical medicine and training. Today marks an important milestone in your career. You could never reach here without hard work, patience and dedication to your ultimate goal. He reminded them that medical careers involve a lifetime of learning. 
the valedictorian spoke on behalf of the class. The day of white coat is one of those times in our lives when we are torn between the joy of our memories and the excitement of our future. Should we look back on what were the greatest 465 days of our lives, times filled with joy from the boisterous sounds of the first day in anatomy class, or the little chatter of friends being made, partnerships towards a common goal. We entered the loving confines of our beloved All Saints University some one year, three months, and eight days ago as an unwritten book, eager to fill the pages. It seems like just yesterday when we're walking into our school with our countless bags and books. It seems like just yesterday we had orientation and we had the pleasure of introducing our young selves to one another. We are now set to begin the next chapter in our book. Our book will veer off from the outline we created, for therein lies the beauty of our journey. All Saints University has instilled in us a tremendous fire, a passion for life and medicine, and a desire to make the world in which we live in better. The All Saints University School of Medicine, Dominica, was opened in 2006. A campus was also established in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Seven individuals were sworn in to serve as councillors on the Lubia Village Council. The council held its 10th inaugural meeting on Friday, 8th August. Addressing the ceremony, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt pledged government's continued support to the council to assist them to develop their communities. I will commit the government to making the 140,000 available to the council for the completion of the playing field. And God willing, you will get that check in the first week of September um, of this year. The contract for the Leopold Road, which you drove on, I should approve the award of the contract next week. Again, God willing, next week. So work will start very shortly thereafter. I think there's some other thing coming from this part to the Minister of Finance for his approval. But also say to you that we, we are committed to empowering communities, empowering village councils. And once the council is prepared to, to work in the best interest of those whom we represent, the resources will be made available. Honorable Minister for Community Development, Gloria Schellingford, enlightened the new council members on their important role in building unity. Councils such as yours have a greater task to foster, because remember I call all of the communities, so you have a greater task, councils, to foster cooperation and collaboration among communities, which while they are neighbors with each other, consider themselves to be separate and distinct. Each of you have your own little aspect and culture. However, I say to you that once this cooperation has been achieved, it can be used to the advantage of all, for certainly there is still truth in saying that unity is strength. You know that united we stand, divided we fall. The newly inaugurated council comprises of Vanessa James, Kathleen John Baptist, Kathy Moise, Derwin Peltier, Janice Roberts, Vincent Stephen, and re-elected chairperson Rosman Libre. This is Libre's third term in office. Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Roseau South Constituency and Minister for Community Empowerment, Ambrose George, congratulated the council, particularly Libre, for her dedicated service. It is certainly an indication um, of the confidence that not only her fellow councillors, but also the residents of Lubia and the greater area of Lubia uh, continue to place uh, in Mrs. Lebrun uh, because of her experience and her level of professionalism and her purpose in terms of offering her continued service to the people of the communities. So I again congratulate you and look forward to working with you again for another term. The village council serves the communities of Castle Comfort, Lubier, Madrill, Fourbauer, and Wallhouse. 
And that's the English news. McPherson St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, d'état récolte qui département statistiques qui a mis ensemble autant important pour le développement. Parole cela, sorti au chef département cela, Madame Prima Carret. Ça est important pour le pays là, parce que l'information uh, pays là, pas qui pédit. L'information pays là, qui est là pour comme une génération qui est venue. L'information pays là, qui que présenter nous que présenter information pays à depuis nous ni mon que ça c'est vie c'est l'on madame Carrent public là que ni pouvoir pour taper information online ça c'est affaire ordinateur tout monde que ni accès pour information ça là et ben si mon regarder la pays a tié comme ça qui était production ça qui était growth economic growth comme un an est passé yo que ça ouais ça on la nouvelle, messieurs, mesdames, officiers médicaux en Dominique, docteur Charlotte Jeremy Coffey, qui a confirmé par Wall comment la crise maladie de Chikungunya descend en Dominique. Quand même, docteur Coffey dit record, il y a eu un qui, mois passé, était ni plus que 3500 cases, mon report, et puis il y a 141 cases confirmées. Docteur Coffey a gardé le développement de cela, si l'on campagne, ou là, il y a eu l'édition publique là, contre l'épidémie cela. Et de même si la situation là à présent, le ministre de la Santé qui continue pour action combattre la maladie là. Donc, il y aussi qu'à complémenter l'officier de santé pour travailler ailleurs pour combattre le virus là. En d'autres nouvelles, plusieurs nos en Dominique qui ont reçu le traitement, manière pour travailler et assister au monde qui est destroyé, qui a servi de manière de ressuscitation, ça a créé basic life support. Il y a une cérémonie pour en place bon matin là, en l'occasion et puis en l'hôpital Princesse Margaret en Wazo. Nos Debra Philip, c'est coordinateur des affaires de services de l'hôpital Princesse Margaret. Eh bien, nous découvrons tout nos en Dominique. Pour yon, ça, si, ça aide au monde. Si yon moun tombe, yon tape mal tche, et bien, yon pas sa respire, et bien, yon pas ni bon circulation. Nous avons essayé d'éduquer tout nos. So, si yon moun tombe, yon ke sa aide, yon ba yon la vie. Oui, moi je voulais dire nous nous bien plaisir et nous obliger de merci pour um, Dr Agatine Scotland. C'était un nos qui t'a indiqué nos en Dominique. Et ben, il en les vacances, il a travaillé même l'Amérique à présent, mais il en les vacances, et ben, il a décidé, il a descendu en Dominique et ben, il y a un monde qui traîne um, pour ça ba moun information contre CPR et ben d'accord pour ça vini et ve moun ça là pour ça faire éducation ça là pour toutes nos dominique ça 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 trapé Philippe fait parole pour mon cause là bien important pour travail nos cause ça là bien bien important parce que il ça sauvé la vie au temps moun parce que si on moun tombe et ve ou tapé un mal chair ça nous ka ki heart attack et ve ou pas ça brief ça yo pas ka um, marcher yo ça mort mais là nos tapé indication ça là yo que yo, yo aussi yo ni pour practice comment pour ça faire là yo tapé information ça là yo que ça sauver la vie moun et ben ça bien bien important pour tout monde dominique et tout monde qui ka vini dominique parce que ni moun étranger qui ka vini ici aussi si yo tombe malade c'est nos ça là et nos là là qui en travail ben qui bon chimien c'est nos la que ça en des moun pour bailler la vie vie finalement acting chief physical planner kelvin roll ka fait parole qui police était ça qui land use policy pas que adresser des disputes mon épité. Si l'on met ce rôle, disputes c'est si un affaire légal, quand même, pour les cela, nous c'est une régulation, comment nous ça servit de ça là. Et on se fait par rôle qu'ils ont fait zoning, ça c'est une manière pour se parler de que point en considération, chaque occasion, ça qui est appelé action, manière telle là, ça servit pour les affaires de développement. Les affaires qui ont fait appelé attention, qu'on s'est l'occasion, pas que ça serve pour d'autres bagailles. Rôle fait par Wall pour mon consultants, ça c'est mon quitté ici en Dominique, qui est retourné en pays là pour implémenter le plan salaire depuis le cabinet approuvé. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un créole pour à présent. Non moins, c'est McPherson Saint Louis. Au revoir. Two ways to use a less sugar coming up next. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. 
Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. Ban sugary beverages in your eating regime. Begin at the place that you can control best, and that is sugary beverages. You do not need sugary beverages, period. This includes flavored soda, fruit juice, and energy drinks. Replace fruit juice with the real piece of fruit and get the benefits of the fiber interacting with the fructose to reduce its impact on your digestive system. Quit snacking on sugar. Sugary snacks have a habit of sneaking into your daily diet in all sorts of seemingly harmless ways. In the morning, a muffin, in the afternoon, a candy bar, and in the evening, candies. All of these are soon add up, and mindless munching is not good for your health. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our news website, news.gov.dm. Like us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Kredisha St. Louis. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus. Mm -hmm.